Among the treasures of Cambridge University Library are the Geniza collections, more than 200,000 fragments of medieval manuscripts retrieved from the storage room, the Geniza, of the Ben Ezra Synagogue in Fustat, Old Cairo and its surroundings. The Cambridge Geniza collections consist of the Taylor Schechter collection, the Louis Gibson collection, shared with the Boyan Libraries at Oxford, and the Mosseri collection. Consisting of 7,000 fragments, this collection was assembled by Jacques Mosseri, a successful businessman from Cairo. In 2006, the Mosseri collection was entrusted to Cambridge University Library on a 20-year loan. During its stay in Cambridge, this collection will be conserved and digitized and thoroughly catalogued. But how do we get from the unconserved stage to this easily consultable book? The Conservation Department at the University Library has been conserving Geniza fragments since the 1970s. Many of us currently working in the department began our careers as book and paper conservators working on this material. Our main objectives are to reveal and preserve the text, stabilise the fragments, improve housing in order to reduce direct handling and facilitate digitisation and access. When the Masseri collection arrived at the University Library in 2006, our colleagues carried out a survey which recorded the condition of every single fragment in the collection. The survey revealed the fragility of the fragments and highlighted common problem areas. Typically, the fragments are very dirty and there are stains, holes and tears, insect and moisture damage, and in some cases, almost the complete disintegration of the substrate and the inks. Working on a large-scale collection like this, the challenge for conservators is to find a conservation treatment that not only fulfils the objectives, but also that can be easily applied and adapted to every single item. Before any conservation can take place, we need help from a field expert who can read Judeo-Arabic, Arabic and Hebrew. They identify the recto and the verso that's the front and the back of each of the fragments. This is a known work. This is a commentary on the Babylonian Talmud from the tractate uh, Arachin. We can see that probably these two smaller pieces may fit in the empty spaces here. And actually, thanks to conservation, they may be reunited and joined together. Once I've recognized the recto, I wrote the outline of the fragment so that the conservators will then know which way is up and which way is down, what is the front and what is the back. And then I write the class mark. When a batch of fragments arrive in conservation, the first thing is to prepare a documentation spreadsheet. This tick box form helps us keep track of our progress and record what treatments have been applied to each fragment. We also photograph the recto and verso of every fragment before any conservation treatment is carried out. Some of the inks on Geniza material can be extremely powdery and flaky and in some cases the inks have almost disappeared, so all are assessed before any treatment is carried out. The inks are tested under magnification using a linen tester and a fine sable brush. We gently brush the surface of the ink and then assign them a level 1, 2 or 3 depending on their friability or how likely they are to become dislodged or detached. Those assigned a level 3 are at extreme risk of loss and are put aside to await ink consolidation at a later date. A lot of Mazzari fragments have dirt obscuring the text. The dirt is removed using a soft sable brush. Overall, we try to avoid brushing directly over the inks. However, for the fragments with stable inks, such as this one, gentle brushing is okay. As you can see, this is an essential part of the process. 
there is a lot of dirt and dust to dislodge. Where we feel we need to work in finer detail, we use a microscope to assist us so we can be more precise with our cleaning. Next we need to unfold a fragment to reveal any hidden text in the creases and folds. We apply a small amount of deionized water along the edge of the crease and this helps relax the paper fibres so that it opens more easily. In general, we always try to minimise the introduction of moisture, as excessive moisture can have a deteriorative effect on the fragments, particularly the inks. Now the unfolding is complete, the fragment is placed between blotter and silicon release and underneath a lightweight in order to acclimatise to its new shape. When it comes to repairing the fragments, we are not trying to restore them to complete documents, but rather stabilise them as they are. There are two options for repairing them. We can use wheat starch paste and, when further support is required, a remoistenable tissue. Wheat starch paste is a starch-based adhesive with excellent archival properties. Again, we use only a tiny amount in order to minimise the moisture that we introduce. Remoistenable tissue is a tissue paper pre-coated with a thin adhesive layer. We make this in-house using Berlin tissue, which is an extremely lightweight but strong and fibrous paper. Not only can the adhesive layer be reactivated with minimal moisture, but the lightweight Berlin tissue also places very little strain on repaired fragments and is barely visible once dry. Once dry, the fragments are ultrasonically encapsulated between inert, archivally sound polyester sheets. The brand name for this material is Melanex. The library has been encapsulating Geniza fragments in Melanex for decades, as it provides significant support for the fragments. We use spot welds around the perimeter of the fragment to gently hold it in position. We do a strip weld around the edge of the melanex. We leave an air hole of a few centimetres to allow air flow to the fragment. The fragment is now ready to be digitised. Once the fragments have been digitised, they are bound into bespoke bindings designed in-house. The final result is a very handy and easy to consult book that makes the work of the researcher very comfortable while preserving the manuscripts from degradation and damage.